guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome to another First Division preview show. We've got five fixtures as usual this weekend. Four on Friday and one on Saturday. We start off at the Carlisle Grounds where Bray Wanderers take on Galway United Dads. And uh, Galway United, we were talking about them, how they're on great form. Um, Bray be delighted with that point they picked up in the end against Cork. Um, this is a difficult one, isn't it? How do you see it yourself? Yeah, look, Bray did excellent against Cork. They, you know, they really showed fight, determination, and spirit to come back and scrape out that draw. Like, you know, it's it's one thing coming back from being one down, but being two down and come back and get a draw very late on the game shows some serious determination and spirit. No matter who you're playing against, no matter their experience level or the players they have, they showed they fought to the end and full credit to them. And I think they'll take it into this week against Galway. Galway's going to be one of the, one of the toughest teams to be facing against. And they're free scoring at the minute. And they're Four full team, time. Really? Yeah, they're, they're in form. They're free scoring. They're a full time outfit. They're going to be very, very difficult. But I think, you know, they will put it up to them. But I, I can't see them getting that, anything out of the game. I think it'll be a Galway win. And I think, they could, I think Galway could win this one 2 1 for me. I think there's got too much quality all around. And they'll be looking at going up. So. 2-1 win for Galway for me. Yeah, Philip, we saw how Galway's balance seems to be better. You watched their game the other week and you said they were very good all round, basically. Um, Bray are going to have to be at the very best here, aren't they, to get something out of the game, I think? To be honest with you, Keith, I think even at their best, they won't get out of the game. Um, I just think Galway, as I said, watch the games and they were brilliant. So I just can't look past them, to be honest with you. I just think they're in flying form and everything's going right for them. So, yeah, I, I just, I think they'll, if they win and Shells drop points this weekend, the league's, I think it's back back on. Like, and that's mad to even think that we're even discussing that. Like, you know, because it just goes to show how well that we are playing recently. Yeah, we don't want the league to peter out either, as you were saying before as well. So, um, I think like Bray do have attacking threats. Like, you know, we've talked about how they can't get Gary Shaw right this season, which tells me he's in trouble, to be honest with you, because this is coming the back end of last season, muscle injuries. When you start getting muscle injuries that age keep getting them you're in trouble Galway Rory Keating has been scoring a few goals the last few weeks as well he's a good he's a good player I think he's from Mayo as well so interesting stuff there uh, <laughs> Bray yeah I don't know I just think Galway will keep up the momentum as well another clean sheet for me I'm gonna go for Galway to nick it 1-0 speaking of Shelburne they travel to Athlone on Friday night as well Athlone a few players back for this one Killian Campwell might be back mean he is back they're looking a bit stronger, a bit more confidence after winning against Captain Teeley. Shelburne, not as free scoring the last few weeks. Of pinch draws, um, you know, pinch wins and that kind of thing. We're pinched last week as such against 3D last minute goal there. But um, does, um, do you think Athlone could upset the odds here? I think, you know, you always have that face. No matter who you're playing against, you can get some kind of results. You know, you can't ever go into a game thinking you've lost or you've already lost what you've played. So, as long as we're looking at this, and it'll be looking at, at Shelburne's past performances and saying, how can we attack them? What can we do? Or how can we play to our own strengths? Because there's no one... You know, I, I think that they are a high-energy team. I, I've seen a few games that they've played, not many this season, but I've, I've watched a few. And from what I've seen, they're not the worst outfit in Division 1, but they're just, you know, they have... I think they lack a bit of balance. Sometimes they defend really well, but not in up front. Other times they have really good going up front, but they've not in the backs. And... If they had balance this season, I think they'd be so much better. And it's just probably the influx of players they brought in just wasn't healthy for them. And then lads going out on injuries and then suspensions and then such a mix up in the teams. But, you know, it'd be very hard to look past a Shelburne win. That You know, I, Shelburne, anyone in this league should probably be winning, especially if looking at it on paper, I think Shelburne should win it. And going through Shelburne's players, even if you don't know Division 1, you'd know pretty much all their players. Um, a lot of them played for Bowes. So, <laughs> you know, famously called the Bowes B team. I them. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I think it's going to be, you know, a Shelburne 3-0 win. Um, unfortunately, I think they're going to turn it loan over. Uh, especially at loan, they've been, you know, playing OK recently. They've players back and a bit of confidence going. But I think Shelburne will turn them over. And just Shelburne will need to kick the start this to get the last bit of the season going for them. But Shelburne 3-0 win for me. I think one of the interesting things, Philip, is the fact that Shelburne have the best squad in the league in terms of players available and that. And you find, by the way, clubs that have the best squads, the best depth in terms of quality as well, have the least injuries. Because it means if anyone has a bit of a knock, they're unlikely to play because there's someone as good pretty much to come in. It's the teams always with the smaller squads because you risk players more. 
and um, you play them maybe if they're at 75% and they're more risk from injury and that. But that's been a big thing for Shelburne as well this season. But um, I don't know about you, Philip. I just sense that Athlone might pinch something here. What do you think? Big time, yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, th- I think winning last week and the way the way Shells have been recently, I just think this has come at the perfect time for Athlone to turn them over. Two or three weeks ago, I'd have said they wouldn't have any chance. And I've looked back, I've made sure I've looked back on uh, Shells as well, Keith, particularly for the channel, like, but I've looked back on their highlights recently and I'm kind of looking and saying, they can see a lot of goals like, in recent weeks, like, do you know what I mean? That, like, compared to what they had been previously, you know, um, they'd kept a lot of clean sheets there for one particular spell, those four or five games, but they seem to, they, seem, they don't seem to be able to keep a clean sheet there. And yeah, from like, from watching them a few weeks back, like, when they were going through that good spell and not conceding too many goals, that's kind of phased out a bit. And it teams that when when you're looking back, if you go and look back at the your high, uh, shells highlights over the past few weeks in particular, uh, they're giving a lot more chances away than they have been as well. So I just think that's something that you need to you need to factor into consideration. And the fact that at long got their first win since I think it was uh, March, I think it was. So they'll be looking and. Feeling really optimistic coming into this game. Do you know what I mean? I thought, as I said, I seen them. Do you know I watched them live? I thought they were really good. Um, and the thing that did surprise me about about them as well that I didn't probably say enough on the uh, on the on the review show was how well defensively organised they were. They were really, really well defensively organised. And I think if they can bring that into this game, don't rule them out to get a result. I'd love to say they're gonna win. Um, Shells have a really strong side, but I'm kind of edging towards a draw. So, you know, it's it's one of those games where if if it goes the way you're thinking, could go. Do you know what? I'm going to stick my neck out on the line. I'm going to say 1 0 Atlone. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I'm going to go with a draw, actually, 1 all. I do think Atlone have attacking players to hurt them. I think Meany brings a lot to this team when he's when he's available. He really does. He was very good at draw that as well in the first division, as good as some of the players that draw to have now in the Premier Division, which is interesting, but Curtis Byrne as well, Derek Daly and that as well. Um, yeah. Philip, something just came into my head here. Was James Duna even on the bench, did you notice, for Athlone the other day? Um, I'm 90% sure he wasn't. Interesting, because he's been li- linked with, strongly linked with a move to Cork City, which is interesting, Um, after just signing for Athlone. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I feel confident that loan might get something here. So, one all draw for me. On to Treaty and UCD. An interesting game this. Obviously, Treaty a point ahead of UCD in the table. Um, you know, Andy Myler, very consistent UCD have been the last few weeks. Daz, they'll be looking to... This is a good opportunity for UCD if they can get a win to lay down a little bit of a marker. Treaty have been getting a lot of credit the last few weeks. Uh, have you seen this one? Yeah, look, it's going to be a very interesting game for the league anyway. Like, as you said, a point, as you said, a point separates them there between the two. And you know, a point when you're going to play against each other, you know, it makes all the difference. Because alone, win this now, the leapfrogging by two points. But Treaty, I know, would be getting an awful lot of credit last week, but I think we have to respect UCD, what they've done again this season. And they always have a high turnover of players, but they always produce players and they always set, get themselves up the league. And... You know, they're never, you're never the butcher and boys of the league. They're always up there and they're, they've been trying to go into a bit of form now recently. But, you know, the form's been up and down. If, if they could get a bit of consistency going, I think they'd really fire themselves up the table a bit more and lay down under the marker. But teams are going to come and push the players again. It's, it's, a, it's a story tale of UCD to keep losing players. But I think it's going to be a draw. I think it's going to be a very hard game to call. They both come with different qualities, but... Treaty have been playing better recently. I think they've been scoring more goals and been more consistent, whereas UCD have been a little bit less consistent and haven't been scoring as many goals. So, for me, it looks like on paper, anyway, for me, it's going to be a 1-1 draw. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting one as well. Um, I mean, Philip, yeah, I mean, Treaty, as he says, does have been doing very well. UCD have been inconsistent. But, interestingly, UCD haven't actually lost any players in the window yet. Yeah, um, yeah. I would have thought personally if they were going to lose anyone, it would be by now, though. Yeah, and I think I don't know what it is. Like the last couple of weeks, um, I think they're kind of being found out a bit. To be honest with you, it's it's not really like them to go through uh, such a strange set of results. Because if you look back over their last 
five or six games, they haven't been really great. Well, without being exceptionally bad, they haven't been great. So, um, seed more goals. They've scored. They've kept up their goal scoring form, I think, but they're conceding yeah. more, aren't they? That's it. And you, like the other side to it is, Keith, when you're conceding, you can't concede three and four in a game and expect to win it. Like that just doesn't happen. Um, I know they've done it for a spell there about two years ago when they were conceding four, but there was four and five. But they're like, you can't. That that's just not able to happen. Like it's football. Like the, if you give any team a four goal start. Like the game's dead, but anyways, what I was saying was, I just think that this game is coming for them at an okay time. I, d- I think the result for Treaty will be a massive result for them. Like they they pulled it back, they they fought right till the very end, and they got a deserved point and um, a wonder goal as well. And both sides actually had wonder goals to get themselves back into games in the last minute. Both of them did it last weekend, so I don't know. I just think I. More I look at it, Keith, I'm edging towards Treaty, you know, I just think that they have, they're just coming into it at the right time, if I'm being completely honest, you know what I mean? I know they've had a couple of mixed results recently, but I just think that that draw against Shelburne will give them massive confidence. And as we said, they're, they're, uh, they're doing a brilliant job down there. They're really defensively organised. And I think if they can do that again and bring that into this game, they, they, I think it's going to be quite comfortable for them, actually. I'm going to go 2-0 Treaty. Yeah, I think they'll win as well. I agree with you. I think they'll be buoyed by that result last week. I think they'll kick on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe 2-1 because uh, UCD usually score goals as well, basically. Oh, we haven't backed UCD, actually. I haven't tipped What's them. that? I think it's the first time on the show that I'm not tipping UCD to win. So. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Really? Interesting. <laughs> interesting stuff. Uh, on to Ferry Carrick Park and Wexford take on Cork City. And it's weird because this is ninth and 10th, or rather, I should say 10th and ninth in the league. Eight points between them. But um, this could be a very entertaining match. I mean, judging by Cork the last few weeks, they're scoring, they're conceding. Wexford do play nice football, as we said before. Um, Daz, I can see a bit of entertainment in this one. If anyone's anywhere near Wexford, I'd actually recommend they should go to this one, to be fair. Yeah, definitely. Like, Cork have been scoring a few goals, you know, late on in the season. And they're conceding plenty too. And, you know, Wexford, they've been scoring goals too, but they've also been conceding loads. So it could be a very high scoring game. It could end up being a draw, like a 2 2 draw, or even a 3 3 draw, because both teams are going at. They're not, you know, Wexford, anyway, is not afraid to play football. They have a few okayish individual players. My lines want to look out for that we've already discussed in the show. He's a Bulls player. He's someone I'm keeping an eye on this season. He's. He's been popping up in live score. He's been popping up in Wexford. Highlights has got a good first touch, good true ball, good pass on him, a good shot on him. He's been scoring goals. So he's someone to look out for for Wexford. But I think, you know, if Wexford are going to try and get points off anyone, it's probably going to try and be Cork. They're one as close as two of them down in the league. Um, yeah, I can see it being a draw, high score and draw, 2-2 two, two draw. I tell you, Philip, he's some crack of Wexford won this Um Five points for Could you imagine the three pundits or the, the traveling pundits? Jesus, the <laughs> could, you, could, you, oh. could you imagine Gavin Woods? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I tell you, the, Hi, missus be, the, missus, the missus won't be imp- the missus won't be impressed. That's all I would say. Um, look, I think I know it on paper it looks like it's going to be a really, really good game, but I just see it being a scrappy affair to be honest with you. I just see it going that sort of way. I hate to kind of piss on the parade, but uh, <laughs> I think if you look at it overall, both sides, the quality up front isn't great, but defensively as well, it's not really great. But you, look, Cor- Wexford, we know are going to be in this position a lot of the time, you know, whereas Cork, I don't know, they just demand a lot more. And I think that might actually just get them over the line here, to be honest with you. I think if I was to look up on paper at both squads, I wouldn't say it'd be full of... Cork, but I'd, I'd say there would be six or seven players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, at least, you know, that would go in there. Um, and look, I'd say Wexford can go into it. They're obviously going to go in and try to attack the game and try to win the game like they've always done. They've always tried to be competitive. And I suppose the last few weeks they have been really competitive without being outstandingly good. So with that in mind, I'm going to say Cork. But I'm going to say Cork 1 0, scrappy minute goal, last minute goal. I'm going to tell you it's going to be Wexford 1, Cork City 2. Kyle Robinson will score for Wexford. Keen Murphy will score for Cork. And Alec Byrne will score for Cork. Put your money on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> if I get it's that right, don't put money on that. Like, gosh. 
be upset, wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> moving on to another team from County Cork, and that's Cove Ramblers. They take on Cabin Teeley on the Saturday, actually. Um, you know, Cove Ramblers had a few good results, and then they kind of had a few bad results. They were getting close to the playoffs, and now they're before their way again. Uh, Cabin Teeley. If, they're, if they've any chance, Cove, of really trying to reel in teams above them, they probably have to beat Cavan Teeley, who are above them in the table. They're seventh in the table. Um, they're four points, by the way, above Cove as well. So it's a big, big game for Cove. Cavan Teeley, again, struggling to score goals. They've scored 13 this season. Cove have only scored 14, by the way, as well. So um, it looks like all the makings of a tight game here. Cabo seem to be a little more, bit more comfortable away from home. How do you see this one, Daz? Yeah, look, even them stats as you named out there are very interesting. Like on on paper, they look at, like extremely close sides, I think. And you know, I think Cab Cleary just have a bit more experience in the team. And I think it a few standout players like, you know, Marty Waters might be one on the wing that can do a bit of a job for them. And Cove, you know, there's a very young team again. They always have a young team, but there's not much separating them. Um I can see it being a boring enough game. I don't like saying that, but I don't really think there'd be much going at it. Um, it's, I, I really can't see it be high scoring either. I'm going to actually say it's going to be a nil nil draw. They're just going to cancel each other out and they're going to sit back and try and go out on the break maybe. And Yeah, I can see it being a boring enough affair. I thought it'd be Ray and Cove's parade. And I was like, I do like Cove as the footballing team and I've been down there a number of times and they've got a good few people down there, like really good people at the club. But, going to be one of those games I think and then they'll draw yeah funnily enough one of their biggest threats in terms of scoring goals is actually their centre back Charlie Lyons believe it or not but Cabin Teeley I mean Philip uh, does touch on Kieran Marty Waters there and uh, like he's been a stalwart for a good few years now as well but I don't think he's been quite at his best this no. season has he no no and I, I seen him during the night at times really really struggling during the night when he uh, when he was on the ball so I, I don't know I just, I just think like I am gonna say I think Cabo will win the game. I do think they'll win the game. I just think they have that little bit more quality than Cove. But I, I, I just don't, I, I'm struggling to find where the goal is coming from. Do you know what I mean? Like we've, we've touched on it. They're, they're the second lowest scores in the league, only behind Wexford. And I don't want to be repetitive, but like it, it, it is gr- it is grim sometimes to look back at the Cabo highlights because you're not you're not really gonna to see too many goals unless they're conceding them. Um, but saying that. <clears throat> But as I said, you're annoying me a review of the game against that loan. If they can get all my Phillips on the ball more, they will create more chances and score more goals. They need to emphasise that because, uh, like, as good as uh, Karen Marty Walters is, I think all my Phillips is a, a young, eager lad. And I've, I've seen him firsthand and know how good of a footballer he is, um, having played with him at college. So... I just think if they can get him on the ball more, they, they will cause trouble. I, I, I do think they'll win this game 2-0. Um, I'm going to say Labout, this is going to score. And I'll say Labout, this will get a double, to be honest. And that's, I know I've just come... You're doing a me. <laughs> I, I've just, I've just uh, contradicted myself saying that I had to watch, but I, and, and they don't score many goals. But I just think the way things have gone recently, I think they need a kick up the arse. I think this is a good game for them to get a result away from home. Yeah, as I said, they're better away from home, but at the same time, Cove are very difficult to beat at their place as well. Yeah. And you even see teams like Shelburne and Galway, they struggle to get... They might win there, but it might be 2-1 or 1-0 or something like that. Um, for me, I'm going to sit in the fence and go one all. Both teams will score and they'll have to be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> So look guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks for coming on boys as usual. Guys, subscribe if you're new, hit your bell notification button so you don't miss a video, like the video and let us know what you think in the comments. Good stuff lads, cheers.